Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today for the weekend we'll do something a little lighthearted and fun, and that is we're going to be talking about a new fantasy console called Quadplay. It's completely free and open source, but first off, what exactly is that fantasy console thing? Well, this is an artificial console, a console that runs entirely in software. It's designed to give you sort of the um, constrained environment kind of programming feel that we had right in for old 8-bit systems like the Game Boy, but using emulation and fake systems. So it's a fantasy console in that it is a virtualized console with a constrained environment and generally some kind of a programming layer to make it more accessible and approachable for developers. One of the most famous out there is Pico 8, but there are several of them. Tick 80, Lico 12, Pixel Vision 8, uh, one I talked about a while ago called Nano Jam. Uh, but today the one we are talking about is Quad Play. Now Quad Play is from the same guy who made Nano Jam, it's from Cal effects and we'll get to that in a second because this guy uh, Morgan McGuire has done a lot of stuff including amazingly enough he was one of the authors of the textbook I used in college for learning computer graphics and he's not that much older than me I don't think which is very impressive so first off here we have um, uh, quad play running and it's running in a browser so we're actually inside of Firefox right now there is a standalone emulator you run this on your local machine and there is um, coding information for various different environments we'll get back to that in a second but as you can see it is a very straightforward concept we've got a number of different games available to play uh, we've got virtualized controls here. You can use any of the modern controllers you want out there. And as you can see, there are a couple of games implemented. So we can go ahead and show you one of them in action. Now I'm gonna try and control this using a mouse. And that's not easy. So let me just turn that down a bit. All right, so let's go back up and we shall race. And there you see it. I don't know what buttons actually do, but this is one of the games that is available for quad play. Uh, Pretty polished, it gives you that whole Nintendo-esque feel uh, on a virtualized handheld device. And once again, if you've got a controller, you can uh, fully uh, hook up and play this in any manner you want. You can also even run this on your phone and use touchscreen controls and it actually plays pretty well. And you'll see over here, we've got the tools options available. So we can change out the theming and the color of our console, but we'll get back to that in a second. We're gonna look at a locked down IDE version of this console in action. Now, first off, back to that whole Morgan McGuire name. Now you may have heard this on this channel in this past because he actually did G3D Innovation Engine and he did um, Nano Jammer and Turtle Script. I think those are all things I have talked about in the past. He's got a wealth of information on um, graphics programming in general along with the graphics codex. So he is a great resource for learning computer graphics for sure. He works for the NVIDIA now, I believe. Um, but Quadplay itself, if you're interested, it is available at morgan3d.github.io forward slash Quadplay. Of course, I will make all the appropriate links available, including links to some of the other stuff and some videos I've done on it, including a video on NanoJammer and on the G3D Innovation Engine. So if you want to check those out, do check the links in the linked article down below. So what is Quadplay all about? Well, it is uh, 60 frames per second at 384 by 224 pixels, uh, 496 colors, so kind of like the, what would that be, the Atari ST? Um, hundreds of built-in sprites, sounds, and fonts. You program in Pixel Script, a friendly Python-like language. Order independent 4-bit alpha transparencies. Um, native 2.5D graphics via Z order. 9.4 megabytes of total sprite memory. Up to 64 sprites and font sheets of up to 1024 by 1024. Uh, four 10-button game pads. Uh, optional 192 by 112, 128 by 128, and 64 by 64 screen modes. And it is completely free and open source. So if you want to jump in, there are some instructions on doing so uh, it is licensed under the LGPL license as you can see right here um, the LGPL license oh so some of the other bits of it are under uh, different licenses but this code itself is under the LGPL license I normally don't like LGPL license but it makes total sense in this kind of case basically any derived product needs to remain open source uh, and it works great for applications. I just don't really like LGPL for development tools and developer libraries. This is a different story. It's to encourage things to stay open source. So I 100% understand that license in this particular case. Um, so again, you can see all of the source code is actually available here. So if you want to write your own virtual machine or your own console, uh, you can learn to do so here. Um, 
and uh, all the source code is up here on GitHub. As I mentioned earlier on, it is available uh, under the LGPL2 license. The cool thing here is we've also got a very good manual here, and there's also an IDE version. This is uh, what we're gonna be looking at, the editing disabled version of the IDE, and here you can see it in action. It's just like what we saw before. In fact, it can be literally what we saw before. So this is full screen version. Uh, there is the, uh, the console running that way, and you can obviously run your code inside of this. Uh, we switch to a straight text editor view, or we can switch to a bit of a hybrid version. Um, so you can see all the various different pieces. So there's a script you can work with. Uh, this, this is the script language itself. So this is the PYXL or pixel script. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Again, it is very Python-esque. And there's the final thing we're going to hit on. So you can see here how it plays over here. You've got virtualized controls over here, uh, output or debugging. You can set watch points. Um, this is scan this QR code to easily connect mobile devices to the same server as this browser. So this is where you would ultimately develop your application. And again, there are all kinds of assets and sprites that are built in and available to you. Um, and then you can run your code like so. I don't know which project this is actually going to, oh, quad paddle. And you can see it in action there. I don't know if I can, no, I can't control these, but it does show you uh, what keys correspond to each command and you can run it accordingly up in this corner. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause that so you don't have to listen to it anymore. And the final thing we are going to talk about today is this. And this is probably the most impressive part of quad play. So also, sorry, you've got um, some more tools up here that weren't shown before. So you've got font packing, font generation, and quantitizing tools up here. Uh, but what is perhaps the most impressive part of all is if you click on the manual. So this is the manual that comes with, and this was literally just launched earlier this week. So this is all, this is a version one first out to the public launch. And here is the documentation for it. So it's got documentation of how your program flow works, examples of how the code works. You can tell this guy is an educator because this is it's actually pretty amazing. And it's even got a migration path. So if you're coming from Pico 8, here's what you should expect instead. Um, we got a, a documentation of all the tooling involved and the language, the keywords, how things work. And then of course, the, the various different tools, emulations. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, there's those three sets of uh, tools for uh, doing conversions and such. And then we get into the library, standard library that's included here. So you see you've got things for arrays, ints, objects, and so on. And then you get into game specific stuff like sound playing code. All of it is fully and completely documented, of course. We even got code here built in for pathfinding. I believe we even have tile map TMX support uh, out of the box here uh, and then they've even bundled in a bunch of assets a lot of this is open source stuff such as all these kenny assets are available um, via these urls and you see there are a number of documented assets available and font packs th that you can start with off the hop and code so if you just want to start getting in there playing around and making games you can do so you can configure it with json files uh, there is a tool coming in the future to make this um, so they are going to be creating tools in the future to make this easier, but for now, uh, it is not there as of yet. Uh, but as you can see, like, there is just staggeringly good um, documentation for this thing already. And then on top of that, if you wanna do your development inside of your um, development thing of choice, we've got tools here for how to launch the IDE, uh, the local emulator on your machine. And then this is even more impressive, we've got, um, plugins for different IDEs or how to get up and going. So Emacs, Vim, uh, and probably most impressive or most useful to a lot of you guys out there, uh, Visual Studio Code. And you see here, you can configure it to work uh, by installing the extension that it also ships with. So if you want to do your code from the command line, running the emulator, and you want to work in Visual Studio Code, there is um, you know configurations for uh, the pixel script available as a Visual Studio extension. Uh, I can't believe that actually shipped day one. But as you can see, it is extremely well documented. You can see where they intend to go with it. So there's gonna be a sprite editor, a map editor, um, code editor and font editor coming at some point in the future for 1.0. I'm not sure how far off 1.0. I was actually not sure what the version number is for this version right now. Let's see if I can actually get that. Quad play. Yeah, I got no idea what version this is. Uh, but uh, that is 1.0 stuff they're looking at adding in the future. Um, and then after the fact, they're just gonna keep adding more and more stuff as we go on. Uh, 
definitely an impressive project. I, I got to say the stuff that Morgan keeps putting out is very impressive to me. And once again, if you are looking to learn how 3D engines work, I do recommend uh, checking out G3D Engine. It, it, the innovation engine is an impressive piece of work. And again, I've linked to that video down below as well. So let me know what you think. Have you played around with virtual consoles? If so, which one do you like the best? You're going to be checking this one out. Uh, is there something you know that really makes a console shine to you? Or do you think the whole idea is absolutely nuts? Anyways, something for you to play around with at the least. It's got three or four built-in games just to get you going. And it's got, as I said, amazing documentation. So if this is the kind of thing you want to check out, it's it's quite impressive how far along this one already is for something that was just released just a few days back. Anyways, that is the Quad Play Virtual Console. Hopefully some of you found that interesting, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.